Okay, so how can one restore their self-esteem? Let's say you've managed to break away from this toxic friend. How do you rebuild yourself? How do you find your confidence? I think I think it's one of the reasons why people then stay in toxic friendships because they're scared of being able to move forward without this other person. But if you manage to break free and you've gotten rid of that friend, you're no longer taking their, their calls, you don't need them anymore. How do you rebuild that self-esteem and restore your confidence? Um, okay, for me, I, I got to this point where I told myself, I am my best friend. I am my best friend. I oh. need to be able to rebuild trust in myself to make the right decisions, to trust my opinion, trust my gut, and be able to listen to myself. Mm. And, you know, actually going through a season of being alone, for me, that was one thing that helped me to build my self-esteem. And I also believe having one loyal friend is better than having 10,000 fake friends. You know, quality over quantity. Yeah. You don't exactly. need time for 10 friends for you to, you know, to, to, to feel like I, I, I've got best friends. You don't need a squad. Even that one person, you know, is enough. And you don't necessarily have to be best friends with that person. You can just have that close and intimate relationship. You know, that sort of thing mm -hmm. where you know that if you need them, they'll drop everything and they're there for you and vice versa. That sort of vibe. I, I agree with Olivia. Self-love. I call it self-love. You should yeah. love yourself. <laughs> Take care of the heart. It's very fragile. <laughs> so, um also surround yourself with people who've got you at heart people who care about mm -hmm. you so you isolate yourself from the toxic friends and then spend more time if it's family let it be family then stop having friends for some time until you are okay you feel you love yourself enough then you can go out there and you should never give someone so much power guys like you know, I don't know why as women we do that. Maybe because we are emotional beings and, you know, we're all lovey-dovey and that sort of vibe. But you shouldn't give someone so much power that they're in charge of your happiness. That you can't even make a decision yeah. without consulting that friend of yours. Each and every time you want to do something, you have to consult. Or something, every time something happens in your life, you want to tell them everything. And you also need to have boundaries. Especially now when we are, when, when you've got children or you try to get married, you mm -hmm. find that the sort of things that you're comfortable talking about with that friend of yours, that lifetime friend, also changes. Because you don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to tell them everything that's happening with you. Even when you're planning big things and you want to make a big decision, maybe you want to relocate or you want to buy a stand or something like that, it's not like you tell them everything. You might tell them when it's happened. And then when you tell them when it's happened, to say, you know what, oh, so this is what's happening. I got my visa. I'm, I'm now going to Canada. If they're upset with you, then I don't know. I think you've got issues because when sure. when you get to this age, they said they, they need to know there's certain things that you're going to be comfortable talking about, and they need to respect that there are boundaries, and it should not be a big deal to say you didn't tell me that you're moving and stuff like that. I know I don't know if, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. I've got a friend of mine who tells me, you know what, Cleo, I've got a friend for everything. If I want someone to pray with me, I'll call this one. If I want someone to to go hiking with me, I'll call this one. If I want someone to gossip me, <laughs> I call this What's one. So... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> She's very clear. She's very clear so, about the thing that she wants. Yeah, she, she knows her friends and she knows this one is is all about praying and all and this one is all about this so she differentiates and spends the time accordingly to what she's like doing <laughs> i'd want to be the one that's called for praying not the one i don't enjoy joy this one is just for clubbing <laughs> <laughs> oh god so can some toxic friendship be good for your personal growth you know i think um they are good for your growth actually, because uh, you get to learn certain life lessons, like we are talking about the friendship lessons that you get to learn. You know, there are some things that you really need to get burnt to learn, in order to learn. So that actually shapes you in life to, and to build those boundaries that you were talking about, Rufaro, 
to say, okay, with this person or with people, I go this far and whatever. And as you, you know, you progress as you go. Um, like I was saying to somebody that um, when I went through a season of toxic friends and relationships and all, you know, um, I envisioned a gum tree. A gum tree is so high up. But if you notice that, it sheds leaves as it grows. As it goes up, it sheds leaves. Uh, because those leaves mm. are probably toxic with time. They are no, go, go. to shed off. They need to shed off. <laughs> so it wouldn't be where it is without those leaves shedding off. They have to shed off for you to grow. So people like that are important in your life. You know, like you're saying, they help with your self-esteem. They help with your confidence. They help with building boundaries. They help with, you know, every growth aspect of your life. They are necessary. They help you open your eyes to different other possibilities, aspects, and everything in life. So they're actually good for you. But not that you should go fishing for them. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay but it, what's healthy okay so what's healthy is acknowledging that okay fine i went through this phase and then you you pick yourself up and you move forward don't necessarily keeping them in your yes. life in your life is not good for your personal growth for obvious yes. reasons pulling you down and they're taking yourself as oh. they borrow money and they don't return you you achieve something mm -hmm. great in your life and they make you feel bad about it mm -hmm. so knowing what you know now what would you tell your younger self when you know when it comes to friendship? What advice would you give your younger self right now? <laughs> well, say to myself, try your person. You know they always say you need to try your person before you get close to them. I'm sure if you were them or if you are you and everyone said when I love, I love. So you now know exactly what you're looking for and when you say you love, you love. So I told myself it's better to try a person first before you out. Know yourself first. Know who yes. you are. That way you're able mm -hmm. to, 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 to weave out certain people. I think uh, maybe just give out what you want to receive. If you want to to have loving friends, then just show love. If you If you want those toxic friends at the time, Maybe you are attracting them. You are also doing something wrong. So just give out what you want to receive. I, I, I guess what I'll tell my younger self is that, you know, what, like I said before, there are friends for a season, friends for a reason, and friends for a lifetime. So when a friendship yeah. comes to an end, yes, go through the process of, you know, mourning for that relationship, but it should not affect you in your life that, you know, you can't sort of move on with yourself. Just don't give people too much power over who you are. Any final thoughts, guys? We come to the end of our session. Thank you for your <laughs> yeah. I actually learned a lot from you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, so you, thank you for having us. Thank, yeah, thank you. you so much for coming, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this session. You know, we had a life coach who was telling thank us you. about seeing gum trees and shedding leaves and stuff like that. I found that whole symbolism very, very powerful and I was really like, you know, soaking it in. And um, I enjoyed everything that you guys had to share with us. And thank you so much. I hope that you found this video to be very helpful for you. Please share your feedback in the comments about some of the relationships that you've had as far as friends goes. And I know as women, you've got loads of stories when it comes to that. So see you on the next one. Thank you, guys. So this is it, thank guys. You, so thank you.